Hello my friends and welcome to episode 6 of our Football Manager 2020 Beta Save Beta Save? Beta Save with Barcelona Today is the end of the first season review and that means that we're going to get at least two seasons in before the 24th when we will be starting a brand new series uh, I'm still working on the technicalities of that a little bit but as everyone knows it's going to be with Rangers as kind of per usual for the channel um, we're going to have some goals there, I think. Um, I was thinking of a stipulation, but I think I'm going to start a goal instead. So let me know what you guys think of that in the comment section down below. Um, and as you can see, I've left the league table up. We fell short um, of winning the league. Five points off. We've kept our job just about as far as I know. I've not skipped forward too much, but I've not been golden for a board meeting. Uh, form towards the end of the season was pretty strong. The board have given me a pretty hefty transfer budget. Don't know where we got £118 million pounds from, we're £50 million pounds or so in debt. But they gave me £118 million pounds to spend, so I've already made one signing for the summer and I'm going to go into that in a sort of minute when we go through our squad review. And actually, in terms of how the squad has played since January, it might look a bit of a strange signing um, for the, most, the biggest chunk of our budget to go there in that specific position but we'll go into the schedule now now the last episode i'm just double checking was the copa del rey final uh, so that is right here so since then we've drawn two games and that's kind of well i say we've drawn two games that would have gave us an extra four points but i still lost the league by a point and um, they were both disappointing but we'll go through them quickly so we played carrots and gabriel barbosa getting the only goal of that game before we played ellie bar they actually had 10 men for the majority of this game. Uh, we went 2-0 up through Griezmann and got it back to 2 all, um, And then Griezmann and Trincao scored to make it 4-2 and they got it back to 4-3. They had 10 men since about the 10th minute or something. I've got no idea where that performance came from then. But it was a really strong performance, particularly when they went down. And, you know, I had to actually adjust my tactics for this game. Now, as you can see, we did have Diego Almeida and Rambo, uh, Ramos Mingo in defence, PK got injured, you know, because the injury crisis wasn't bad enough. So we were playing a very young defence. Uh, Ramos Mingo, I've got, you know, decent hope for, extended his contract and whatnot, or triggered an extension, but had to buff his wages, and at that point, the board refused to discuss that with us. Uh, well, say refused to discuss it with us. They were very limiting, uh, 2.7k, or 2.7k, was what I was allowed to offer anyone at this specific point in time. Um, as I said, I don't know where the money came from. Um, and back to Elibar, um, Diego Almeida is again another very high prospect defender. I'm excited to develop him. I think he's going to need another season in the B team, if I'm brutally honest. So we'll probably not see him too much in this series. But I think if you're you know, you're looking for a good, good young talent, this is the guy that I would go and look for. He has also signed a new contract. We then played Huseka, double from Gabriel Barbosa, and they scored. And I actually, was, it's the first time we've conceded when I went into my sort of seeing out the game tactic. Now, so, some of you have seen that in the last few game episodes. You know, we just shore up the defence, be a bit more cautious and whatnot. And we've not really conceded any, and we don't concede many highlights when we do that. There was one highlight, they scored it. I instantly switched back and went all out attack. Um, and there was no more highlights unfortunately so a 2 all draw there before a 1-1 draw against Granada which was disappointing Barbosa with a goal again and this is something where I'm going to highlight um, the new player that we've signed as a striker uh, Barbosa was always bought to be a backup but he's had an outstanding 6 months since he came in um, and he's been a big big part of the squad so I feel kind of bad for him that he was that he brought in as a backup, got into the first team, done absolutely outstanding, and is getting knocked out. So we won, uh, drew one all there before a 6 1 win at Real Betis. Griezmann and Barbosa with hat tricks in this game. Uh, it was already 5 0 before they scored, and then Griezmann completed his hat trick for the second of the two hat tricks. Before we played Atletico, Pamplona, Barbosa with all four goals and a 4 0 win to give him seven goals in two games. We then played Elibar, uh, I've skipped a game there. Uh, Barbosa on the score sheet again for eight goals in three games and Gerard Piquet finishing off with a header from a corner in his return. And then we played Elecce and at this point Messi was starting to get back into the team. 
a brace from him and one from Gabriel Barbosa. And then the last time to finish off the season played Alves away. Messi, Griezmann, Barbosa and then Collado off the bench to score his first goal for the senior side. So we're going to quickly look through it now. Some of the stats are not accurate. This is a bug. I have reported it. Um, and I say that and I can show you exactly what one we're on about. So straight away. So if we go to goals, you see uh, Gabriel Barbosa here in third. 86 minutes. Remember that number. Now when we go to uh, per goal rather. 86 minutes goals per minute. Now when we go to average goals per minute. He has shown now. So uh, it's, it's actually updated now. Which is good, but it wasn't shown previous, it was a bug. So, 86 per minute. Uh, go goal every 86 minutes. The best in the league by about 14 minutes. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, so, as you see, Anton Griezmann and Barbosa finishing second and third in the top goal scorers list. Messi all the way down in 10th with only 13 for the season in the league. Bit of a disappointing season from him. I think Griezmann hit 30 for the season uh, in all competitions, and Barbosa was about 24. So, just to compare. Messi and Griezmann had a full season. Barbosa had half a season. Barbosa outscored Messi over all competitions and the league, and was only six behind Griezmann. Now, granted, seven of those goals came over a two-game spell, but you know you still have to find the form for that. Griezmann was never consistent. Messi was never consistent for us. That was the issue that we had. Um, expected goals. Uh, that's actually team uh, assists. I don't know how high we are here. Pjanic in joint fifth, Griezmann in joint fifth, Fatty in joint eleventh with Messi. So you know, actually fairly reasonable um, key passes. Do we have many up here? Messi up on one hundred nineteen key passes, so that's good. Um, and then passes attempted. I'm surprised we're not on anyone on this list. Um, maybe that's the tactics. I am considering changing the tactics for next season and going to a 4 2 3 1 rather than the 4 1 4 1 or the 4 3 3 with the DM wide, as the game is calling it this year. It seems to change this tactics name every year, although it could be because I'm playing two inside forwards rather than uh, an inside forward and a winger. Um, so that's kind of how that looks. Team detailed wise, average possession. I don't think we were particularly great in terms of average possession, but we're down in 7 with 52%. It's fair, it's fair. Um, I'm content with that. Um, if we go down to uh, do, 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 do. goals, as you see, 80 goals were the top goal scorers in the league, so we've got that achievement. And uh, goals per game, we averaged two goals per game, or over two goals per game at 2.11. Uh, Real Madrid on two expected goals for 60, so we're well over that number. But obviously being a team that's um, at the top of the league, you kind of expect to uh, do that. Real Madrid had three more penalties than us, but we were second, and that cross is completed. I don't think we've crossed that much. 366 crosses, so, you know, actually a fair few. Um, I'm kind of just looking now for clear-cut chances created, 21. That's fairly good. Um, you know, these are the first time I've looked at a lot of these stats, so expected goals against... Uh, 26 and we conceded doesn't tell us their uh, profile stages conceded 26 so we conceded pretty much bang on uh, team detailed and that obviously balances out there were some games where we should have conceded a lot more and there was a couple of games where we I think the Granada ones actually had a good one the one where we drew one all they had one shot on target and it was something like 0 0.06 goals expected per game so, you know, it does balance out. Over the course of the season, this is evidence of it, we were expected to concede um, 26, and we conceded exactly 26. Valencia surprised me. They went in January, probably not conceded a goal, and they fell off the cliff after January. Um, now, obviously, Valencia are a very difficult team to manage in this game, and I think I'm going to try a little personal save with them. Someone was recommending a challenge with them. I'm going to have a quick go at that. It's like a personal save once I've uh, finished recording all this uh, beta. Just to again, have a little feel for things, get a bit more in depth, and it might be easier for me to do that when I'm not recording, you know, to learn new things. That I can then pass on to you guys um, going forward. So as you see, clean sheets, Valencia, as I said, that had that higher defence initially. Uh, 23 clean sheets really doesn't surprise me to lead the chart because it would have taken an even bigger fall off. 
for them not to get that Real Madrid on 21, us on 19. Um, and then you've got your average spends and whatnot. Average salary Pellegrinium, we have to bring ours down. Simple as that. Um, as I said, if we have a look at finances, we're 50 million in debt. We've got 49 million transfer budget remaining uh, because I've spent, as I said, a fair chunk of money on a marquee signing. Now the club vision, of course, said we want big name players, so I had to, you know, I had to fulfil that for one, but also make sure it was the right signing for the club. So I think it cost us 69 million, which might be a giveaway to those who are sort of aware of contracts on football manager. Um, early on but again I had to make that move quick so squad wise it's kind of the last thing that I'm going to go through um, and I'm going to sort by position we're going to go for each position so Neto I'm going to try and sell again I'm fairly content that Anaki Pena could play as a backup or we can bring someone else in for cheaper than what we'll be able to sell Neto for I mean he's still valued at 13 million with his value decreasing um, most of that's been decreased when he's been transfer listed um, or always and this is a little tip for you guys always untransfer list your players as soon as that window shut bring them off the transfer list it will just allow them to hold that value uh, Mark Andre Ter Stegen we know Donnarumma is coming in so he will go he is another one on a fairly decent wage he's £150,000 a week so I think that will be a wage rise and a compare compare uh, but not a huge one uh, he is obviously a top top goalkeeper but I don't think you can justify having Donnarumma and Ter Stegen I think you know, they would get unhappy. I've been at a club before where I've developed and I've had three world class goalkeepers and every single one of them was kicking off because the minute you dropped any of them for any reason, they would kick off because they expected to be starting. And I think that was back FM 18, maybe I had Rajkovic, Lafon and a goalkeeper out that was a DJ that was probably better than both of them to be honest. So as soon as you dropped any of them it was an issue and I don't want to have issues in the dressing room. Gerard Piquet is only valued at eight and a half million. The team with Piquet in it is far better than a team with Piquet not in it. The problem is, he's going to regress. We've got good young lads. We've got Eric Garcia coming in, as you know. I think just selling him, pick up whatever money we can, get 110k off the wage budget, or renew his contract for, you know, the same amount of years and see if we can reduce it and keep him around as sort of like that vice captain who can step in when need to uh, kind of thing. I'm not sure in terms of what I'm going to do with Gerard PK in that regard, but ideally, I feel bad for selling PK. I mean, he's been here for years, uh, realistically, but I think selling would be the best option. Uh, then you've got Ramos Mingo, who I mentioned, played a game for us. I think he played a couple of games, actually. Um, Report-wise, it reckons he's currently operating at first division level, which is good. It means he could probably be a backup, but I think, again, much like Diego Almeida, which I've already commented on, I think dropping him down to the B team would be the best idea. We could always promote back up if we change our mind. Samuel and Titi is on a huge wage for the amount of games he played. You know, he says there that he's played six games this season. It's really not good enough for a guy that's on 210k a week. I think selling him is by far the best option. I don't think he's a whole lot better than, say, now he's left foot, so that's slightly different. Uh, where is he? Ronald Aludjo. Now, is he better? Yes, he is. But I don't think he is £207,000 a week better. Now, Aludjo obviously will want a wage rise at some point. I'm surprised he's not got, which is negative. Okay, no strong feelings about the manager, which is very good support, right? That's fine. Um, one way, again, he's worth 51 million, coming into his prime. I think cashing in at 51 million probably wouldn't be a bad idea here. At the same time, he's 25, maybe keeping him around for another season would not be a bad option. It would be one less player to buy, kind of thing. So I'm not yet made a decision on Long Lay. He will either stay or go. Um, but his wage makes me feel like keeping him wouldn't be the worst option because he's only, say, only. Uh, compared to some of the other players in the squad, it's only on a hundred grand a week, which is, you know, fairly sustainable. It wouldn't be the biggest reduction in wage bill. In reality, to replace him probably costs us about 150, 160 thousand, maybe a little bit more. Um, these two loan players, I want to assess all the loans when they come back. Basically, Junior Firpro obviously has that um, clause 
the uh, Real Sociedad combined for £8.5 million. Now his value has gone up, so I'm kind of secretly hoping that they don't trigger that, that they don't have the money or whatever. Um, but again, so the loans we're going to ignore. Kevin and Babu came in for £8 million. It's been fairly solid actually. Um, he's valued at 18.75 million now, so we could cash out and make a profit straight away. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep him around. I think him and Dest. He's good enough to keep him top of the team until Dest sort of is, you know, ready to take over. And I don't think Dest is that far away. Uh, he should be next. No, where is he? He's down here. As you see, he's developed fairly nicely. He's not quite there yet. Um, but if you have a look at his progress, obviously he's had some injuries at the end of the season, been fighting for his position and whatnot. But I actually think that that's been good for his development. As you see, his development's went up quite steadily since December when he's had the competition. So bringing him out of the team and bringing him back in has probably done him the world of good. We're going to Frankie de Jong next. I think now if I go for a 4 2 3 1, he'll just move forward. He will be a starting player. As long as we can keep him fit, he will be a starting player. What's his two negatives? More technical possession training. Now, I do tend to do a fair bit of that. But overall, I think he is a very good defender. Well, midfield defender, I should say. Very comfortable on the ball. I like him a lot. He's 24. He is on a decent wage. But I think that that wage, at his age, with his potential, is fair enough. We'll keep him in the team, keep him around. Um, I'm kind of certain that. And Oriol Busquets, now he has not developed quite the way I hoped he would. In fact, he has regressed. Now, I've had multiple words with him. And this is kind of the thing where I'm go uh, my plan was to say Sergio Busquets keep Oriol Busquets and Frankie de Jong as a sort of interchanging developing ones. Stat wise I still think he's capable of doing that um, but he does need to kick on a bit. Now he has kicked on this last month where game time has been a bit more mixed for him so hopefully it's just been that I've pushed him in too hard, taken him out, pushed him in too hard um, and obviously he's had a couple of injuries as well which maybe hopefully affects it. Ronald Lugio we've covered on uh, but I'll just let you have a quick look at him. He has managed 12 appearances for the team overall, 6 last year, 6 this year, 2 goals, played very very well. I wouldn't, I'm going to keep him around, I really wouldn't be scared to put him back into the team. Des we've touched on Jordi Alba, he's valued at 26 million, 170 grand a week. I'm kind of going to let him go um, and I'm going to go to the under 19s now and I'm going to show you that I'm not going to buy a left back in this window because we've got someone who I think is ready to step up, play back up to Grimaldo and develop and will be better than both of them, um, in my opinion. So, Jordi Alba, PSG are interested. I did offer him out in a cheeky sort of, here, do you want to take him just now and they offer nothing? Seems to be a very common thing, a team of are interested, you offered up to them and they offer absolute peanuts. So, I rejected that obviously, but we'll do this uh, one quickly while I remember and I'll sort by potential here. Uh, where is he? It's this lad here, Alejandro Baldi. As you see, he's still a bit rough around the edges. Um, reports will say probably, I'm going to guess second division, yes, he's operating at second division, which is... I'm trying to work out which uh, tier this is really. Second division, Barcelona beat, right? So it's not even. If we go to senior squad first, second division, Gijon. Right, this is the sort of level I'm going to talk about. When it says second division, this is my understanding. I'm getting very confused with that. And then it goes down, second division B. So I'm guessing it means second division, not second division B. Um, but I think he is good enough to play back up. I think he'll develop very, very quickly. Uh, where's he gone? Alejandro Baldi. Um, so that's the reason why I think we can sell. I'll be comfortably promote this guy. Will he be second choice? Of course he will. But you don't develop players like this unless you give them that time. Now, yes, he could go and play for the B team. Yes, he could go and out on loan somewhere and we keep Alba for another season. And I think realistically, if I wasn't looking at a squad rebuild, that's the kind of thing that we're doing, but right, realistically we're looking at, already, we're looking at bringing in at least one, maybe two centre-backs are first team ready. Now, Eric Garcia is good. Is he first team ready? That's debatable. Now, again, we'll have to assess that when he comes in the squad. Um, so we're back to here, and we're going to click on that. So then we've got Alex Rivaldo, our £20 million sign-in. I think, was it 20, £22 million? 
So obviously I have to pay three million out straight away for him, of which we'll get some of that back instantly. Um, he's played 28 games with five assists, one player of the match. I'm fairly content with him, and the fact that he falls on our homegrown criteria makes him worth, you know, a chunk of money anyway, because that boosts the size of our Champions League squad, and a lot of the young lads who we're going to be promoting up um, will not be in that squad, which means we can have a bigger squad uh, and whatnot. So I'm very happy with him. I think he's a very, very good left back. 25 years old, he's just about to come into his prime. It's a perfect replacement for Jordi Alba, let's be honest. Um, and then we've got Sergio Busquets, who I've already touched on it. I'm probably going to try and sell him. Anyway, he's another one on a big wage. 275k a week, 25.5 million. We could probably get a roughly about that for him. I think we can just get rid. Um, he does have an ambition to be cup captain one day. I'm sorry, old Sergio. You're just not the man for it, let's be honest. Um, we've got better options in the squad that are younger than you. And... You're on a big wage, you're aging, you're only going to get worse. Now's the time to cash in. In fact, last season would have probably been the time to cash in if we could have. Um, all the old biscuits we've touched on, Marlon Pjanic. He's already kind of know what I'm going to say with him. I would like to get rid of him. Uh, he's worth a £45 million, pounds, so we could, we're probably going to make that back. I'd say, I'd probably take 40 to be honest, maybe a little bit less. But again, he's on 210 k a week. I don't think he is worth £210,000 a week. And then we have Frankie de Jong, who again we've touched on, we're keeping around. I think this is kind of mashed up a little bit now with me going into the youth team. We then got Charles Elena, and again, I've been giving him game time here and there. Now, he's been unlucky not to score more goals this season, and in the 17 games he's played, most of them are off the bench, to be fair, 14 off the bench. He scored one goal, but I think he's had about another two or three disallowed for uh, someone standing in front of the goalkeeper, which is obviously frustrating. Ricky Poiga loaned out in January. Um, I kind of want to say him when he comes back, as I said. Nico is another one of the young lads I promoted. Very, very impressed with him when he played. But he's been injured just about every other game that he's played. Um, came up, he's played two games, one goal, and he's been injured in both those games, actually. So I remember that. He got stretched off in one and then got injured for another few weeks in the other and never came back this season. So very unfortunately, got promoted. Took his chance, as you see. One goal, one assist, one player of the match. And he's not going to say a full 90. So, again, I'm going to give him another season. Similar sort of mode to potential wise to Charles Alena, to be honest. Hopefully, he can hit that three star. Eh? Elect Marabia. The guy who I took the gamble on him promoting, he's played nine games. Development wise, how have you developed? Been a bit patchy. So, I'm probably going to drop him down to the B team, to be honest. Probably about the right level for him, or find him alone. I think, again, I took a gamble on him. And I think if I'd been able to excuse me, sort of push the game time for him. But Pedri, who we're going to touch on in a little bit, was absolutely unbelievable. And he was paired alongside Coutinho, who again we're going to touch on later on. Gabriel Barbosa. How much did he cost us? 20 million. Outstanding. 19 goals in 20 league games. Granted, some of them, as I said earlier, over two of them, one assist in the Champions League, four goals and five appearances in the Spanish Cup. Another five assists on top of that. Lots of goal contributions. In 27 games, he's got 27 goal contributions, uh, which is absolutely outstanding. So we're very, very, very happy with that. I think he's going to be an outstanding backup. I just don't see him being an out and out frontline striker for Barcelona, and that was a problem. I, I knew that when I signed him, but I knew we needed that rotation option for Griezmann, and he kind of just started well. And improved and improved and improved and kind of forced me into that Messi, Griezmann, eh, Barbosa front three that I don't think suit Messi or Griezmann to be honest. Although Messi really should have done more outright. Eh, but he's on 130 grand a week, maybe a bit expensive for a backup. Eh, Anton Griezmann, £600,000 a week, worth £65 million. Pounds. 30 years old, now is. This is a prime time to sell Anton Griezmann. He's had a good season. He's on a big, big wage, but right now is probably one of the few times that you're going to get teams, you know, a PSG, a Man City, a Bayern Munich, a Juventus, that will come in and take him off our hands. It's, you know, prime selling time. As long as we can get a club that can afford his wages, it is happy, happy days. Otherwise, we're kind of stuck with him until he's 33, 34, and we get no money for him. Um, so hopefully we can, you know, get rid 
I know he's still got a lot left in the tank. He's still four and a half star ability. But I think, you know, we've got Fatty, we've got Collado, again, all these guys that we're going to touch on further down the list, um, Dembele and whatnot, that we're going to touch on down the list, who I think could be at this sort of level. And if you're going to do that, you have to develop them. Um, we've got Alex Collado, another lad who I promoted from the youth team. He came up, he's played four games. I don't think he played that for me. Three off the bench for me, and he's played one a couple of years ago. Um, as well, 22 years old. It's kind of maybe at the wrong age to develop, so it might be worth selling him, it might not be. I'm not 100% sure. If I was to sell him, I'd be looking for a decent sell on clause because as much as I probably want to do another season here, I'm still looking to make a profit. You know, you still want to build the club in a profitable manner so that, you know, if we ever came back to the save or, you know, if I skipped ahead to see what happens after the life kind of thing, you want the club to be run smooth. Um, so, Francisco Trincao, he impressed me a lot early on and then sort of cooled off a bit. Four goals, three assists and eight starts and 15 off the bench uh, in the league. So a fairly good one. Started all five champions, uh, five of the six Champions League games off the bench in the other. Obviously that was when I was playing Messi at Mazzella. Um, he was solid, I just don't know about him, you know. He's one of them at 21, alone might be the right option for him. The right loan at the right club with the right facilities might take his game to another level and make him Barcelona ready. I'm not sure. Um, but that brings us on to Dembele. I like Dembele. I really like Dembele. Again, there's just stuff that irritates me. He's one of these guys, and I think it's this likes to beat a man trait, repeatedly trait. You will see Dembele running up the park from the left all the way to the right, from the right all the way to the left. And at this point, he's got about five guys around him and he still will not pass the ball. It's very frustrating, but I'm kind of hoping that I can, you know, make him work. If not, ship him off, get 210k off the wage bill, 55 million. Probably get a sell on as well. And we bring someone else in. And it's until they know Messi. Now, Messi is the problem one. I struggle to see even a PSG paying £1.2 million a week. Now, I know he will take a wage cut, but it's more than the board are ever going to discuss. So that's an issue. Um, but realistically, he's in pretty big regression now. Uh, stats might probably won't show this, but you can see, particularly with that injury towards the end of the season, a big drop off there. This has been fairly stable the rest of the time, but I just don't know how much longer we can afford to pay Lionel Messi £1.2 million a week and you know going from there so i think i either need to give him a new contract where we can get the wages down or we have to sell them and that's kind of where i think we're going to end up here is selling them next up is philippe coutinho 63 million four hundred thousand pounds a week again i think this is a sale i don't think he's any better than petri anymore now he's paired petri most of this season up until the end of the season when we had our best form when it was pianic's pairing petri um I just don't think he's the player that I want to build this team around. So as much as he's in his prime, I think now it's prime time to sell. He's got two years left on his deal, so we're not going to have to reduce the fees too much. We might be able to bring in a fair chunk of money, which can allow us to bring in two or three players um, that are much younger, much more ready to come in. That brings us to Ansu Fati. Now, I don't think he's developed as much over this season. I think he had a good spell um, at some point, probably around here actually. And I had a good point at the end of the season where he's developed really well as well. Um, he's been in and around the Spain squad as well. I think I'm going to get him first team football next season. I really want to push on this development. He's now played 53 games and 9 goals for the club. And I think, you know, with the right amount of game time next season, he will be absolutely outstanding. We've then got Pedri, who for me has been the star man. 31 games for the club, 2 goals. Uh, five assists, one man of the match. I think one man of the match is harsh. Uh, he's cost the club eight point two five million before I came in, and he's worth every single penny. Believe me. If you could have told me that I could have bought this guy for eight point two five million at the start of the save, I would have bought him for eight point two five million at the start of the save. Um, so that's the biggest compliment. He's came into the midfield. Um, now he is playing the Mazzala role on the attack, and as you can see, he's got really really good stats for it already and I think he's only going to get better. I think towards the end of the season, he was getting to the point where I needed to rest him, and I probably shouldn't have played him the last two games. 
um, in hindsight I was having to sub him off very very early in both the games just into the second half so I think in hindsight he next season I need to make sure I've got a rotation option for him but he's worth 32.5 million we've got him on a long term contract his development has been outstanding uh, even especially since December look at that absolutely beautiful and that's when he broke into the team absolutely beautiful and then we've got Picue who was the young lad I promoted he's played four games for the club in total I don't think all of them for me one star three off the bench yep no goal contributions unfortunately it's only one goal contribution with an assist rather um, but I don't think he's ready I'm going to drop him back down there is a guy who I just promoted to the B team who I might promote back right all the way up uh, to be honest so if we go to position and down to strikers it is this guy Fabian Liuzzi and he looks really good as well I haven't had a whole big look at the B team and the under 19s but I think he's one that I certainly have looked at a couple of times but I need to go through all these guys properly I'm not going to do that because we're now 31 minutes into this video and it was supposed to be a 10 minute end of season review um, so I'm going to finally give you this transfer so for you of you that have stayed all the way to the end of this video some of you will have worked out with the 69 million comment we have got ourselves coming in Erling Haaland 100 scout summary obviously outstanding player I think he's on about 160 grand a week I've had to pay off um, with a 205 million pound release clause but we've gone for he's worth 70 million we've gone for 69 um, and that should go up but as you see sign on would comply with our policy of signing high profile players he's 20 years old so he meets my criteria of signing young players that we can develop and he's already an outstanding talent one golden boy German player of the year Bundesliga player of the year he's won more awards this season I care to count um, if we have a look at uh, does it show here uh, awards golden shoe Landmarks? Nope. Mm. He's definitely won a lot of competitions this year. Um, and it's came up every time because I've been scouting him. We also got Perala Marila. Eh, Perala Marila coming in. He's coming in for a couple of million pounds. Now he's one of those sort of FM favourites. I don't think we'll see him much. But again, as I said, I want to run the club like as if I was running this day for 10 years. And if it was a journeyman save and you want to look back at the players that you've signed, and how the clubs are doing, kind of like that. That's how I'm trying to see this. We've obviously got Eric Garcia, we've got Donnarumma. Danny Olmo is my top target right now, and this is kind of what I'm talk, uh, looking at. Danny Olmo trained at Barcelona. He would allow me to make some adjustments to the tactics in various, various ways. Um, and he's very interesting coming. His wage demands aren't going to be too high. Right now, I'm putting in sort of low ball offers, as you see, 33 billion, whereas my scout reckons 52 to 51. I'm putting low balls to try and reduce the fee, you know, unsell them a little bit. Like, so we've got for having multiple contracts, and he's refusing every single one of them. Um, but I'm going to end on this episode, uh, on this episode, on this note, guys. Uh, tune in next time will be a transfer window review and sort of a pre season review. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, hit like, hit subscribe. I'll hopefully catch you all next time.